Hello, my friends. Guess what we're doing today? We are pouring paint on a garbage can. Now, this garbage can came from Walmart, but it's a small garbage can. This is going to be a test because if it works out, I'm going to do the full-size garbage can. Why paint a garbage can, you may be saying. Well, why not? It's another piece of furniture in the house, right? Another piece of equipment that we use, maybe not furniture. That was a bad word, but <laughs> I don't know. There's been a couple of nights I've landed in the garbage can, believe it or not. But anyway, let me leave that for another time. It's something that's in our house that is seen that is typically pretty boring, if you ask me. So why not zhuzh it up? And that's what we're going to do today. Now, if you choose to do this to your garbage can, especially the big one, if you wash out the inside of your garbage can, which I do, uh, you're going to have to do it with Lysol rags and a couple of wipes. Um, if you get a big mess inside of it, it's all right to fill it in with some water and pour it out. What you want to do is try not to get the front of it soaking wet okay we're gonna preserve it and and seal it in so that it's waterproof in the end but the you want to try to keep the maximum amount of water off of it that you can now me personally what I do in my garbage cans is I don't ever get a, a, a very rarely maybe twice a year I'll get a ripped bag or something in there but what I do is typically if it's a, a mess inside the can, which I don't think I've ever had a huge mess, but let's say a couple of drips of ketchup or something. Usually I'll just take a Lysol, a Lysol, <laughs> a Lysol rag and just clean it out. All right. I'm never fully putting it in the tub and washing it with dish soap or anything like that crazy, but you're going to have to find a way around that if you want to do this. So Lysol kills 99% of germs. I'm fine just wiping it out, you know, after I change the bag with a, a wipe and good to go. So again, I wanted to try this on a small one to make sure that it would be okay to do on a large one. Um, I mean, it's going to be fine. It's how is the design going to look? You know, so that's why I wanted to try a little one. Anyway, I took the can and placed it over a lemonade container, put it down snug on there, and I am ready to go, okay? That's all I've done. Now, the other issue I have, the lip. So what I'm going to do first is pour some black paint onto the can I'm going to tilt it around and get it all covered. And this way I could take it and tilt the extra paint off the side. I'm going to put it back up and then I'm going to pour just enough paint to make my design on the can so that when it pulls down, there won't be a ton floating in here. But if there is a little extra It'll just come out of the side here. It won't be a big issue. You can also, if you're worried, make some little, um, it won't look the greatest, but you could make a little cut out here with a razor knife and then the paint would just pour out. But I think I'm going to be okay. It'll eventually dry in the groove here and all will be good. All right. So other than black, I have five colors here. Uh, this is quinacridone rose from Amsterdam. Next up, luminous rose holbein. Then I have interference violet from Color Art. I have here metallic purple from Artist Loft. Then I have some true silver prism pour here. And then I have over here the most beautiful fluorescent violet color. And this is Luminous Violet by Holbein. All right. My black is Amsterdam brand oxide black. And the ratio that I mix these paints were 
one part paint, two parts Floetrol, a dash of pouring medium to help it dry a little bit faster. Uh, I just used the Liquitex matte pouring medium. Sorry, I don't have much room here doing this project. Uh, so yeah, I just added a dash to each color, maybe a half a teaspoon, if that. And that'll just speed up the uh, drying process, okay? So as I said, I'm going to start by putting the black on first. I'm just going to do this and let it go down the sides. If you pour it too much on one side, it may tilt. I don't have this set up the best on this lemonade can, so I'm just going to pay very close attention to it. And you know what? I'm kind of liking that drip look on the white. I may not cover this whole thing. That might actually look pretty cool doing it like that. And then once I do the pink, it may, you know, go in some of the white areas, except I just did that. That was kind of stupid. Now let's play around a little bit. Why not? funny it's not going on that one drip <laughs> uh, let's try right here I feel like that game show on um, that game on the price is right Plinko like you put a chip in a certain spot and will it get to the area you want it to go to this is black paint most definitely is not well I get it this time there's one little drip I'm trying to get All right, well, we won't worry about it. That could be a really cool design now that I think about it. Just some paint dripping down it. Of course, I'll have to keep checking to make sure that it's... Ah, uh, there we go. It wasn't pushed down all the way, Tammy. I apologize for the glare. Black is the enemy of all cameras. You just cannot stop it from reflecting things in the area around it. Okay, so I got it all covered. And now what I'm doing is I'm just kind of tilting it a little bit on that bucket. So that the excess in here will run off. But... You can use your stick too to just kind of push it out of there until you feel like it's somewhat flush. So what I'm going to do is, this is for my daughter's room. She wants pink, pink, and more pink. So I'm going to layer a cup as I would for a ring pour. Put it right there so you can see what I'm doing. And I'm gonna put a little bit of black in between the colors. So I will start off with now, the, the first color in will be the last color out, and I want predominantly pink. So I'm going to start with some of this pink here, or violet. That's the luminous violet, okay? Hopefully it's not too thin. Feels a little thin, but hopefully we'll be okay. So then I'm going to go with some of this interference violet some purple And I'm just going to continue to fill the cup until it's about three quarters of the way up, maybe halfway. I always end up using too much paint. Um, you know, you can always play around with it and add a little more. Once you, once you pour the cup over the garbage can, you could also just make another small cup if you didn't put enough at the beginning. But I think less is best to start with.
one other thing if you don't want to take a chance with this doing your uh, big can your big garbage can go to the Dollar Tree if you have to they sell those little pails there use it for your bedroom it's just such a cool idea I think and you know I'm running out of ideas here I've done the toilet seat the toilet the mailbox the table uh, I have a couple of projects that I need to do, but they got to be outside. I don't want to say what they are and ruin the surprise. But, yeah. Going to have to come up with, oh, the ceiling fan. Yada, yada, yada. All right. Right in the center, I'm going to start pouring the paint out in a circular motion. And now I'm just kind of going all over the place. Wow, that looks pretty neat if you ask me. Pretty neat if you ask me. Let's see what happens here. Holy cow. <laughs> oh, it's going to one side, so let's do this. As soon as the bulk of the paint weight is off, it'll just stay still. I'll tell you what, ain't nobody got a garbage can like that. <laughs> That's it. I'm not going to do anything else. Whatever it turns into is what it's going to be. Now, once it's dry, if I feel like I need to zhuzh it up a bit, I'll do that with a little glitter or something. But for now, I'm leaving it alone. So, you know... A little spoiler alert unfortunately when you pour on anything that's 3d because of gravity the design gets pulled down and it never stays as nice as it looks when you first pour it so you know sometimes you'll get lucky with the design and it'll be some nice wavy patterns um this one here it just pulled it down it got very dark once it dried so i was forced to add in some embellishments per my daughter's request but there have been times where I have just poured and the design is perfectly fine on its own but the cells specifically will never stay nice and round like that when they're being dragged down the side of something and I think you'll be shocked when you see what this morphed into so I'll let you look at it now and then let me show you what it looks like after it's dry. And remember what I told you about this groove here. Just take your stick and push it out. Okay, be very careful and it will come out. Oh, and by the way, my husband just came up with a great idea now that I've already gone and done this. So he's in the doghouse, needless to say. Uh, he said, if you have a drill, maybe take a drill bit and drill a few small holes in that bottom lip area for the paint to drain through. So that can be another option, but I love this bottom. I wish that would happen on the front but it doesn't because of gravity so we are going to let it dry like i said and don't you worry i'll have this looking like a masterpiece in no time so here it is 24 hours later 
You see what I mean? It's dark. It's dull. Um, the black in the pore didn't help, but it still, it lost a lot of it. Now, as far as that lip goes, the bucket itself dried 24 hours, but inside that lip, there was still a little bit of white paint. So what I did was I took Q-tips and just wiped it out. Now, if you're worried about it, because you never see that that's facing down towards the floor, but if you want to do something like this to sell afterwards to somebody, just go in that groove and paint with a little bit of black paint to cover up the white areas that are showing and you'll be fine. So you see them there. I wiped out all the wet paint with the Q-tip and it exposed some of the plastic. Now there was areas that were dry and it stuck fine. I was just impatient and didn't want to wait for that area to dry. I wanted to continue with the video. So I just wiped it out uh, again. If this was for anybody else, I would not have done that. I would have let it dry. So this next step is, it's not pertinent to the pore. I was just taking a, a Sharpie and trying to find an area to start with here because it was so dull and dark. I couldn't see where the lines were for me to hand paint my areas in. So I was kind of just using that Sharpie as a guide for myself. So, you know, when it comes to this step of the process, you can spray your bucket depending on how the the outcome is. You know, if you like the design, just spray the bucket. I chose, however, to paint in some areas and add a little bit of glitter for her because that was what she wanted. So this is Black Raspberry Prism Pour. It is a beautiful color. I'm going to show it to you in a second. What I did was because that purple that's on the bucket dried with it. It's almost, it was the fluorescent violet. It dried like really dark. So it looks like a red purple almost. So I took my black raspberry prism pour and some of my big apple prism pour combined them together and made like this pretty plum color that matched better with the color that was on the bucket. So the shade here was a little bit more tame and matched better with the bucket color. So I took this paint and just blocked out some areas to add glitter to. Very simple. It wasn't anything complicated like my other pieces where I had stones and all that. She just wanted a fun garbage pail that had some some patches of glitter is what she said to me. So that's what she got. Again, though, this step is not necessary. You can just pour over the bucket and do a, a seal on it with some clear water-resistant varnish, and you can be done with it. You know, these are all optional steps. The design is totally up to you. Okay, so my bucket is all dry. The areas are all dry. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a concoction of glitter and clear glue to paint into those areas. So I want to do a little bit of a combination glitter. I have two of them from Win Modern Art. I have the Solar Pur Purple, which is a really pretty uh, purple with a heavy shift of green interference looks like so 
We have that one. And then I also have Fire Rainbow, which is a steel gray with that beautiful, look at that sparkle. So I'm going to combine those two into the cup, and then I'm going to add in some clear glue. I'm not measuring or anything like that. And that little bit that was in the cup already was this here. I just forgot to hit record. So <laughs> there's that one. And then we'll take the fire rainbow and add probably the same amount. Or maybe just a little bit less. So add the glue in until it flows off of the stick. You don't want it clumpy. You want it, the glitter to flow off of the stick and that's a good consistency for something like this. Now originally I was just going to put a very light coat of glitter over these areas so that you could see that pretty color shining through but in the end uh, I think that, and you'll see this finished, but I think what I'm going to do is add a little more glitter to those areas. It's just too sparse for me. Um, I like solid patches of glitter. So, you know, it's, it's at that point where it's not enough and it's too much, if that makes sense. So if I had painted that a little bit lighter, I would have been more happier than with what it is now. But it's, don't get me wrong, it's still really pretty. It shimmers beautifully. Um, I just think I want to do solid patches though versus this see-through style that I did. So the next thing I do after this is I just outline each area with my chrome markers that I have and then I take it outside to spray, which I will talk about next. Okay, so last two steps. So my daughter you have to remember, she's 15. She's not looking for gems. Like, you know, I did that, that beautiful lamp and the ice bucket with crystals and all kinds of things. She wants this very plain with just some little glitter patches on it. So this is very amateur for me. <laughs> so you have to keep that in mind when it comes to this design. This is just, you know, what she wanted. So what I'm going to do is take my chrome paint markers and I'm going to just outline the areas and then we're going to go ahead and spray it. Now I'm going to spray it with two things. I'm going to spray it with this triple thick clear glaze. All right. That's going to give me the depth that I need because it's triple thick. It's a thicker varnish. So just like with resin, when you put a coat of resin on your painting, it's almost like the images are magnified because the resin is so thick. So by me putting a, a glaze, a coat of this onto here, it's going to not be as nice as resin, but it's going to give a little bit of a projection to like the color and the glitter areas. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this. Water resistant clear acrylic coating, which I got at Hobby Lobby for $7.99. So this will make it resistant to water. Now this one is moisture resistant, but I don't know if it's as good as a water, uh, specifically made water resistant spray. So I'm going to use both to be care to be safe. You don't need to use both. You can use just one. Um, polycrylic in the can is another water resistant spray if you need to find one you can go on to google type in water resistant 
clear gloss sprays and a bunch of brands will pop up for you. So again, I'm just going to take the uh, marker and just outline some of these areas just to add a little bit of interest. If you're looking for a good chrome marker that has a mirror effect to it, these are your markers. I'll try to remember to put them in the description. Um, I got them on Amazon. I bought them. And if you take a piece of paper and color in a square on it, you can actually see your reflection in them. They're fantastic. So as I said, just a few basic lines and I'm just outlining the areas I put the glitter in. But again, I won't put it in this video because it's just going to be a repeat of what I'm doing. I'm going to end up redoing those glitter areas and I'll probably show them to you in uh, my next video because I just don't like the the sparse sparsity. That's probably not even a word the bare patches showing through the glitter. I was trying to just get it to brush on like really, really light, but I just had too much glitter in the glue and that wasn't going to happen. However, if you want to make a mixture that is like clear glue with a little sparkle, just add the glue in first and then a pinch of sparkle. So I took it outside to spray varnish it and I was going to show you, but the wind was so heavy the overspray I was afraid was going to get on my camera. So I just sprayed it off camera and I'm showing you it here that it's sprayed. And now I'll show you inside. So here we go. Now that I have done a small little trial run, I'll definitely be doing my big one and put a little more work into it than this one. I have a couple of drips here that I would need to sand down. If you get a drip like that with your glitter, you could just sand it down and just smear some clean, not clean, <laughs> some new glitter over that area. Just sand down the bump lightly. But again, I'm not putting much effort into this because it's just going in her room. I just wanted to show you that it's absolutely doable to paint pour over a garbage can. And now that I'm looking at the glitter, I may do another layer of it because it's just, it's not thick enough. Anyway, thank you for joining me. If you enjoyed the video, please click like, subscribe, comment, and share comment below let me know if you're going to try this with your can hey why not i will definitely again be doing mine i'm going to start it probably this weekend so i'll show that video to you in a few weeks it'll take me a bit to do that big one but um it's definitely doable so yeah i hope you enjoyed it as always i thank you for joining me and until the next time, I love you all and happy pouring.